Hello, and welcome to my channel. Hey everyone, welcome back to Andrew's Wizardly Reads, and as always, I'm Andrew, and today I have got another book review for you. But before we get to that book review, make sure you are liking and subscribing and hitting that bell notification so you can get regular updates for when I put out new content. I post every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and sometimes I'll just drop a random video some, somewhere in the week. Now that said, guys, today's book is Men at Arms by Sir Terry Pratchett. This is the second book in the City Watch collection, and I believe the 10th book in publication order. I could be wrong on that. Now, guys, this book takes place one year after Guards Guards, so it will have some mild spoilers. I mean, we are picking up and dealing with the events and kind of the ramifications of uh, Guards Guards. And so, you know, back in Guards Guards, we had Captain Vimes, Lance Constable Carrot, Corporal, Ca Corporal Nobby, and um, Sergeant Colon. And they had to deal with the... Uh, League of the Illuminated Bre Brotherhood, who had been summoning dragons uh, into Angmore Pork. Now, during that whole investigation of, of, you know, rising up and redeeming the watch and kind of taking down this dragon, Captain Vimes met Sybil Ramkin. She is a very, very wealthy noblewoman whose hobby and kind of lifestyle is um, raising and taking care of swamp dragons. She's got kennels in her house. She's written books and studies of Swamp Dragons, and they kind of had a budding romance. And here in Men at Arms, it all pays off because in two days' time, they are getting married. And she kind of doesn't really want Vimes in the watch anymore. So in two days' time, he's going to be resigning his commission and giving up his badge. This is slightly problematic for Vimes because... For 25 years, being a guard is all he's known. All he's known. All of his friends are in the guard. Uh, his life revolves around being a guard. He doesn't really have any possessions, uh, and so he doesn't really know what to do with his life. Now, also because they took down a dragon, they've decided to expand the watch a little bit. You know, kind of as a hey, you know, you could use some extra use some extra help. So they bring in three new characters. We have got Angua. Cuddy, and Detritus. They are all Lance Constables in the Watch, in the Night Watch, uh, at the start of the book. Now, something that this book does do is, if you know anything about Sir Terry Pratchett, you know he's usually going to put some sort of uh, social issue into his books and present it to you in a way that is both humorous, or humorous, uh, absurdist, and told through the lens of fantasy. And in that, we are dealing mostly with racism in this book. It's funny because Angmore Pork is home to humans. It's home to werewolves. It's home to zombies. It's home to uh, dwarfs, trolls, werewolves, uh, dogs, and just all sorts of different creatures who are sentient. And yes, the dogs can be intelligent, probably mostly due to the events, uh, to the intervention of the Unseen University and the dabbling of wizards and mages. Uh, in this book, we, we really get to see these people who have their own prejudices, prejudices learn to deal with them and work together and grow and become a cohesive unit and also become valuable members of the Watch. Now, early on in this book, there is an explosion outside of the Watch building uh, right across the street at the Assassin's Guild. Now, if you know anything about Amor Pork, everything has a guild. There is a Clown's Guild, there is a Dog Guild, there is a Thief's Guild, there is a Wizard's Guild, there is a Alchemist's Guild, there is just all sorts, and of course an Assassin's Guild. There's all sorts of guilds uh, to kind of just keep everything orderly and keep the city running. Basically, uh, permits are given out to thieves and licensed where you pay the Thieves Guild a fee, you get a little card, and if you get robbed, you can flash your card. And then they will just go on their merry way because you've already technically been robbed by taxes. <laughs> and it all just kind of works in this humorous manner. But the explosion in the Assassin's Guild, something gets stolen. Now this something is very anachronistic to Discworld and they don't really know how to deal with it. What is stolen is a gone. Uh, G-O-N-N-E. 
gun. And it's just a humorous way to say it's a gun. Uh, and this person who stole this gun goes about Ingmar Pork shooting people. And they don't really know how to deal with it because really they use crossbows. They, I think there's a flamethrower in here somewhere. Uh, spears, halberds, battle axes, but nothing that can really do long range projectiles like that. And overall, they've got to really kind of find out who's killing people. And what this book does brilliantly is while dealing with all the other issues, it brings it all together and creates a good mystery as well. And so, because we kind of think we know what's going on, because we're given the lens uh, through where, basically, at the start of the book, we see the who we think is the antagonist, and basically they find out something about Corporal Carrot. And they start to obsess about it. And then from there, we think we know where the story's going. I'm not going to say if that's in fact the case, but it does take a couple twists and turns here for us through the just overall story and plot. We also get a lot of humorous uh, appearances by good old Death. Uh, you know, Death is an actual character in Ingmar Pork or in Discworld. He kind of shows up and he always, he's always trying to like improve the experience of passing on. And so usually he will try and tell it like a punny joke or some sort of witty comment to try to kind of ease the shock of you are now dead. And it, it, I really, I think so far, Death might be my favorite character, which makes me really want to pick up the Death books that I've got right up here behind me. I've got all five of the Death collection, and I really want to get into it. I think the first book is more. That said, guys, I don't really want to touch too much on this, because this is a delightful book, and I don't really want to give anything away here. Uh, structurally, again, we have got another book uh, that kind of moves at a very good pace. What you do have to pay attention here is that, again, it has no chapters. So structurally, it's a little bit weird. It kind of just, it is one straight story. Now, it's not super long. You know, it looks kind of beefy. But again, very big line spacing. We've got wide margins and just huge, huge font. So this, this edition is like 350 pages. It took me two days to read uh, in like three sittings. So not too bad. It's not a huge time investment. Uh, but if you are looking for like great stopping places, really all you get is these line breaks with a little asterisk in between to tell you when you're jumping a POV or a time skip. Uh, I ended up rating this a 5 out of 5. I really love the story that this had to tell. I loved the gut-hitting moments. I loved the character relationships in here. I loved the humor. I really pretty much didn't have a lot of bad to say about this book. Uh, it is another home run for Sir Terry Pratchett. And I really, really think that if you loved the first book, Guards, Guards, you should definitely pick up Men at Arms. You will not be disappointed. You can kind of pick up the whole City Watch. I know this is going to sound ridiculous, but uh, I believe Discworld Emporium sells these entire sets um, in chunks. So the City Watch is, I believe, 109 uh, euros or pounds uh, with like $8 shipping. So I know that seems like a lot. You do get eight books for that and you get these nice hard covers with this kind of coarser texture. You get the ribbon. Um, and I mean, it, it, it's a book that is designed for reading. I, I, it feels great in the hand. And if you really, really want these, don't go on Amazon. They're going to charge you $25 a book. It's outrageous. Go to Discworld Emporium and just buy them in a lump sum. Uh, that said, guys, 5 out of 5 read for me. Highly recommend. Uh, if you've read this, let me know in the comments down below. If you, you know, enjoyed the themes or felt the themes were a bit too on the nose, let me know in the comments down below. I am always happy to discuss a book with anybody. Or if you just want to talk books in general, again, check the description for the link to the Wizardly Duo Discord. We've got a lot going on in there. It's a lot of fun. We've been growing really, really fast. Uh, I'm starting to make a lot of really good friends in the Discord. There are people that I just talk to every single day. Uh, and at this point, they are friends and family to me. So come on, jump on in. I'd love to have you. That said, guys, pick up Guards Guards, pick up Men at Arms, pick up Discworld. Do yourself a favor. So till next time, guys, peace out. Stay magical. Bye.